I did want to make a video comparing probes of different sizes and corrosion detection, but this plate I have here that I was going to use is really noisy. So we're going to take a look at that. When you're doing a corrosion inspection, your procedure may give you the option to use transducers of different types. You may uh, want to use a dually transducer like this one, maybe a half inch single crystal transducer like that, or maybe even a really small one. The question is, which one do you use? Well, obviously a crystal of larger diameter is going to cover more area, but this does not mean better probability of detection. Usually on corrosion inspection, the target reflector is probably smaller than the area of the beam. So that means on a larger transducer, the proportion of the target compared to the whole beam is actually smaller than it would be if you used a smaller transducer. But then you get into this game where you're chasing your tail all the time because you want to cover as much surface area as possible. So you want to use a larger transducer, but then this results in a lower sensitivity. We're going to start with this Olympus D790 transducer. I'm going to put it down here and kind of move it around. I know there's nothing at this location in the plate. And as I was moving it around, what happened was I started to find things like that. So I flip the plate over and take a look to see what exactly is on that side. And you can see there's nothing in the middle of the plate. A lot of what we want to inspect is made from hot rolled steel, this plate in particular. So what happens is little inclusions and bits of stuff that shouldn't be there end up getting rolled flat and we end up with these little tiny reflectors. So on my dual crystal, as I move it over to where these little corrosion spots are supposed to be, it becomes almost impossible to try to find these because of all the noise in the steel. Those little rolled in plate inclusions are going to cause problems regardless of what transducer you use. But if you increase the diameter, we're going to then reduce the sensitivity for those smaller things that are smaller than the beam area. So here I'll use a half inch single crystal transducer at five megahertz. And as I move this around, you can see that even those little inclusions sort of tend to hide. There's one right there. But as we got to the back wall and I get into these little pitted locations, you can see they're pretty much impossible to find because they're so small and they represent such a small proportion of the beam area. Now, finally, I'll switch to the quarter inch five meg single crystal transducer. So this one's got a significantly smaller surface area than the last transducer. And this one, of course, is far easier to see those little plate inclusions. And as I get down to where those little holes are supposed to be in the bottom representing pits, they're easier to see as well. But how are you supposed to tell the difference between a small plate inclusion near the back wall and a pit near the back wall? The problem is that you can't not with 100% certainty. Corrosion does not always present itself as a nice vertical back wall signal on the right hand side of the screen, which then slides a little bit to the left, indicating very easy to find corrosion like a step wedge, because corrosion is not always like a step wedge. Corrosion can be very abstract. Think about small pitting, sulfuric acid corrosion, or microbiologically induced corrosion, MIC. They're like little tiny tunnels. And if you're offshore looking at open drain lines with carbon steel pipe, check that six o'clock position. MIC loves that spot. If you've got noisy plate or noisy pipe and you're trying to do a corrosion scan on it, it can get really frustrating. The best thing you can do is encode the data. So I'm going to move over to phase array. I'm going to show you what this thing looks like with TFM. For this, I'm going to use a Vermont NDT 10 meg 32 element A10 style casing. I've got it on a wedge. I didn't have it on a wedge before, but then I remember I made that video where I said, don't use the probe bare. So I put a wedge on it. I can run a very brief acquisition on this just to show you exactly what it looks like with a top view and an end view. As I put the transducer down and pull it, oh, about as smoothly as I can while people are watching me on camera, you can see the signals show up there on the top view and then on the end view on the bottom and you can see just how full this plate is in a spot where there's actually not supposed to be anything. UT is just applied physics. Sometimes we can't bounce sound off of the targets we want to reliably because the steel is going to be too noisy. Things like noisy steel may mask the probability of detection for corrosion and that's something you're going to write down on your report. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.